Hey folks, so this is an example of a sketchbook that I made and sewed. Um, and it's just filled with all sorts of cray, which I will show you a little more later on. I'm just gonna start by showing you the basics of where we're starting. So you've got your packet, and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is fold all your pieces. Uh, you have the cover, which again is, you've got the watercolor with the tooth, it's actually a little bluer than what the um, what the uh, the color of the tag board looks like. You've got a little bit more of a yellow feel to it, um, a little whiter, I guess you would say. So first thing you'll do is you'll just fold like this. And I find if you use anything with like a kind of straight edge to sort of make the fold a little bit better. Uh, paper actually has direction to it and grain, and we are folding against the grain when we fold it in half this way, and so it makes the fold not very nice. Um, I've folded already this one. It's not perfect. It's fine, though. I've got the black one. I've got a few more of these. You can do a two at a time if you want. Eventually, we're going to embed them in each other. So you can start by just folding the thicker ones and tucking them in. And then just keep going with folding one, using this. And to be honest, there's actually a, a tool called a bone, bone folder, and I'll show you that tool in the next little segment that I have. And then here's my regular paper. So you should do this with all of your pieces of paper to start off with. I guess be a little more careful because I have an edge that just left some stuff onto it. You can even just do it right like I'm doing right now. Just one at a time, fold it over. One at a time, fold it over. And then tuck them all into each other. This is how a book is made. And back in the, you know, the olden days, when we didn't have machines doing it. This is why books were so expensive because everyone hand made these books and then they were hand sewn together. It doesn't matter which um, order you put them in. You can put your coloring pages first if you want, like on the outside, um, then your watercolor, then your black and white. De just decide what you want to be the center and run with that, okay? Then once you have it like this, you will take your binder clip and clip it all together. And this is gonna set you up for sewing, okay? Okay, folks, the next thing I wanna show you is basically how to create the holes in the middle that we'll use to sew our piece. Normally, for this sort of thing, you will have these three materials. This is an awl, and I apologize for the background noise. Um, you would have an awl, which is a very sharp tip, and you would have a rubber mallet so that it wouldn't, um, wouldn't hurt your awl, and then you would have something that you actually pound the holes into. But you're not gonna have this necessarily. What I would do then is I would have it clipped, I would literally hold it, and I would pound one, pull it out, pound two, pull it out, pound three, pull it out. You can make three or you can make five. Totally up to you, okay? So what you don't have at home probably is all of these materials. So I'm setting them aside. What you will have is possibly a hammer. You can do the same thing with a hammer and you can do the same thing with a nail. So if I pull this in here, you're also, instead of having um, a wooden underneath, it's best to work outside. And then you will just hammer into the ground and it won't hurt the ground where you're at. So what you can do is you can kind of guess where the center is and then make kind of a quarter way down another hole and a quarter way down another hole. You can even write with a pencil where it is. You also could do five pieces where they're easy, evenly spaced. So if you're using a little nail and a hammer, literally, you'll just hold it again.
same hammer and it's not as easy as what I just did there. You can pull it out and you have a nice hole, okay? If you have neither of these, which some of you might not, we can set that aside. And this is where you have to be extra careful. You all have this needle, which you do not want to lose because we're going to reuse it later. And you all can find a rock. And this will work as well. This is called us being creative genius, where literally you can, and if you don't have a nail, but you do have a hammer, you want to be really gentle with it. But you can, again, hammer very carefully and get the hole. It's a little bit smaller, but it's still going to be big enough for you to actually put this through. You also can use a little rock. Again, being careful not to break your, your, um, your needle, but it's usually pretty good. And you just wanna be able to go through all of them. Don't unclip your piece. Keep it together because it'll be a lot easier to sew through. So that's your next step. Good luck. Okay, the last little bit is to take your needle, which you have in your piece. Um, this floss, which this is the part that's kind of tucked under. If you pull on it, it'll probably come loose. You can wrap it around and you want to cut yourself a piece that is probably about three times the length, give or take one, two, three of your, of your journal for sewing it together. Okay. So do that real quick. So threading the needle through this tiny, tiny little hole. Well, that is the hardest part. And with flosser, floss, embroidery floss, you end up having um, six strands. And so when you are threading it, even missing one of those strands going through can be kind of a pain. I don't know if you can see all six. It's a little hard. I often lick and then I go and I make sure there's no little fuzzies on the edge and then work to try and push it through that way. When I can't do that, I also, you can split the thread, but when you're pulling it apart, you wanna make sure that you're not, it'll wrap in on itself when you pull it apart. So if I were not holding it down over here, it'll start to tie a knot. So you have to be really careful. It'll. especially when you've got a long strand. When you've done that, then now all of a sudden you have a strand with two or four on it. Again, or three, get it wet. If there's like a little strand sticking off, grab a scissors and just trim it so that you've got a really nice clean edge. And feed it through. And I literally take my glasses off when I'm doing that. Once I get it through, that little bit then I grab very carefully and I pull and I usually there's two ways one is you can pull it through if you cut it to be the length of six six um, of your journals then you can have it be doubled up otherwise you'll just have it and you'll leave probably about three or four inches so that when you pull it through it won't fall off and when I'm pulling it through I always pull it through holding on right here so that I know that when I pull it through, I won't keep pulling and eventually it comes unthreaded, which then you have to rethread it, which is frustrating. Okay, thanks. All right, so I have my threaded needle and basically I am just gonna go over, under, in and out. Um, I don't have a knot tied at the end because um, I'm gonna tie it all together at the way end and make it look pretty. So I think I'm gonna start on the outside because that's where I want the knot to be and I'm just gonna feed it through. And sometimes it can be hard to pull it through the hole that first time. Come on, do I have a little knot? You can pull a little bit and then just make sure that you leave maybe about three inches, four inches for time. And then you'll just go over, under, And then flip this way, and you can kind of see, all right, now I'm going to go this way, through here, 
You can sew up first and get it through that hole. This is clipped together, but it seems to have kind of slipped a little bit. And that's what happens if you don't have your clip together perfectly, you're gonna have trouble getting it through the hole. So then you have to kind of try and go back and line it all up, which is, all right, I got the beginnings. So you can see me having a rough go here, which is why I keep those clips. Once you've made it, keep that clip on there. And it'll be a little easier to feed it all through. It's this last one, it doesn't want to go through. There we go. All right. So now I can go back this way, or I can wrap around if I really want it. Go like this through here. See how I circled around? And then go back down here and through this one. Sometimes you gotta pull. Now I have run out of thread because remember I had to cut mine shorter and that's why I say go long. So I'm gonna have two knots if I decide I wanna do it this way. But I think I'll dutch, tie it like a pretty bow, just make it look cool and run with my mistake. You wanna tie it pretty tight. So if you can have someone, like you can take off your needle, have someone put your finger there and then that'll keep it together. And you see how it kind of fed through? And now we've got the beginnings of a sewn together book, okay? Maybe I'll choose a different color for down here, just for the fun of it, okay? And there you have it. There is my yellow and pink sketchbook, all sewn together. It's a beautiful book ready to draw and the next step that we will be doing is decorating the boring old cover